I wanted to murder Jake Paul, but um, it's bullshit, man. It's uh, I mean, how old is Mike Tyson? 60? 57. 57. Jake Paul. 27. You, you are a disgrace of a man. Jake Paul. Jake Paul. Jake Paul. I like. Yeah. Hey, I hope y'all keep that same energy when I knock this old man the. I don't know if he's in his prime. He's fat. He should be lean and mean. He's fat and funky. <laughs> I saw him with his shirt off the other day. He's fat. I thought, did you start training already? But if that Mike Tyson from Marvis Frazier fought Jake Paul, Jake Paul's dead. He's dead. He's not going to make it. So you have to say... Hey, I hope y'all keep that same energy when I knock this old man the fuck out. I don't know if he's in his prime. He's fat. He should be lean and mean. He's fat and funky. And you're apprehensive. And once you're apprehensive, it's over with. Please, Please promise, promise me you're, you're going to kick, kick this guy's, guy's ass and shut him up. up. Please. Boy, he's going to regret that. All the old guys are like pulling for him. Like, yeah. come on, Mike. Come on. One more. You got one more in you. Hey, I'll, I'll do just get that, that for you. you. Even coming off the best, I still think he, he wins. You, you, coming off... It's hard to say because you never bet on, against a 27-year-old no, fighting a 58-year-old. And everyone will see July 20th. I will prove them wrong once again. I think you're suicidal. I think you're suicidal. That's what I think. Carnage. I love the biggest challenges in the world. That's what's made my whole entire career is taking big risks. Taking place in the first place at all because of your differences, particularly your age. Well, I don't see too many people critical about it. Look at this. Ha 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 ha. Carnage. I said, listen, I started Jake off and I'm gonna finish him. Hey everyone, brace yourselves because today we're diving into a story that's been dominating headlines, stirring up controversy, and frankly, leaving us with more questions than answers. Yes, it's the Tyson VS Paul saga where hype meets history, bravado meets experience, and ultimately, A, the hawk meets reality, or does it? Let's unpack the whirlwind that led to the cancellation of one of the most hyped fights in recent history. Mike Tyson, an iconic titan of the ring renowned for his devastating knockouts and a presence that spells pure intimidation, vows to unleash carnage at 57 his words, not mine. He's set to face Jake Paul, the internet sensation who's turned viral fame into a polarizing boxing career. Tyson, the embodiment of raw power and relentless ferocity, is prepared to test a modern celebrity fighter whose credentials and career have sparked widespread debates across the sporting world. Then there's Jake Paul, charismatic, confident, and a master of media manipulation. He's been in the ring with athletes, but never a beast of Tyson's caliber. Leading up to the fight, he was all in, pushing the narrative, feeding the hype machine, until suddenly he wasn't. And then boom, Jake pulls out, citing personal reasons, the timing, just as the fight loomed close, set off a firestorm. Critics cried fear, while some fans speculated deeper issues at play. But let's not gloss over the voices that warned him. I can't do what you do, mate, it's great. But in no way, shape or form can you claim to carry my sport. Absolute Tony Bellew swiftly condemned Jake Paul's assertion of legitimacy in boxing, stressing that without battling genuine boxers, hasn't even fought a boxer yet. So how can you claim to be carrying me sport when you haven't fought someone who comes from my sport? It's unbelievable. One cannot claim to uphold the sport's heritage. Bellew's stern critique reflects a widespread concern that celebrity boxing undermines the true essence and integrity of the sport. I wanted to murder Jake Paul, but um, it's bullshit, man. It's uh, I mean, how old is Mike Tyson? 60? 57. 57. Jake Paul? 27. You, you are a disgrace of a man. Sean Strickland didn't just join the chorus of disapproval. He cranked up the volume to 11. You are the epitome of weakness. You are the scum of the earth. The fact that you even... He labeled Jake Paul not just as a disgrace, but as a dark stain on the very fabric of traditional combat sports. You are the epitome of weakness. You are the scum of the earth. Strickland's biting words echo the deep-seated frustrations within the fighting community, like someone bringing a water gun to a sword fight and calling it a duel. The fact that you even have a platform or anything of that nature is a slight on society. You truly make me disgusted. And if I ever encounter you in real life, I hope that I just don't lose my and go to prison. His unapologetically blunt critique serves as a stark reminder that in the eyes of many purists, celebrity matches are more sideshow spectacle than honorable combat. Tough, if Jake Paul can survive three rounds with the extra weight he's put on, he may have a chance, but he's gonna survive the first three rounds. 
Roy Jones also weighed in, focusing on the tactical missteps of Jake Paul's approach. He pointed out that Jake's added bulk might just slow him down rather than bolster his punch against a juggernaut like Tyson. Jones emphasized that while extra weight might sound advantageous on paper, in the ring it translates to decreased stamina and endurance critical flaws when you're up against a seasoned veteran whose blows are like freight trains. It seems Jake might have misunderstood heavyweight as just a suggestion on the scale, not a strategic challenge against someone of Tyson's caliber. If, if Tyson's taking a dive, if Tyson hits him, it's over. So, oh, uh, hey, by the way, last thing, last thing to go, power. Even Chuck Liddell chimed in, reminding everyone of Tyson's legendary power, a factor that could end the fight with a single punch, reflecting on the psychological edge that Tyson's reputation alone brings to the ring. If Mike take it serious and want to do some harm to Jake Paul, I don't think Jake Paul can stop him. Antonio Tarver gave a chilling analysis, hinting that if Mike Tyson had truly decided to unleash his full fury, Jake Paul wouldn't stand a chance. Tarver's ominous words highlight the sheer danger of the matchup, painting a grim picture of what awaited Jake in the ring, a scenario potentially more akin to a survival horror game than a sporting contest. I work my ass off, honey. Mike now weighs 230 pounds, and he's got these muscles in his forearms. So, so he's sitting there, and he's a different human. He's so intense that I was like, if this table was closer to him, I would be nervous. Like, I wouldn't be able to do my best job as a podcaster. I literally, this the reason why this table is this width. Jake wasn't just fighting the 58-year-old Tyson who'd mellowed with age, he was challenging the lingering ghost of Tyson's former self, the specter of what once had been the most feared man in boxing. Essentially, Tarver implied that stepping into the ring with Tyson could have been less of a boxing match and more of a mission to escape unscathed. Shame on him for saying that and taking these words so lightly because the reality is a lot of boxers die every single year. It's not a game that you play. You don't pick it up and put it down. You're not a part-time boxer, okay? This is a real sport, a deadly sport, one of the most vicious, and it's a sport where a lot of people die. As fight night approached, the tone shifted. The chance of Jake Paul that once echoed mockingly in arenas began to sound like a dirge. Was it the mounting pressure, the fear of real harm, or a strategic retreat? Theories abound, but the result is the same. Jake stepped back. The fight was off, and the boxing world was left debating what could have been. And listen to this, Jake's talking about discipline and love, comparing their bout to a father disciplining his son. I love you like a father loves his son, but I must discipline you. <laughs> You're going down, old man. Okay, I love you too. Then he shifts gears, promising to win in devastating fashion. It's a bizarre mix of reverence and rivalry, a psychological game at play before the physical one even begins. I'm gonna win in, in devastating fashion. I think the people who are really experts at betting are rooting for me. And Mike? He's just doing his thing, training every day, gearing up, peaking at just the right moment. So folks, what's your take? Is this going to be the carnage Tyson promises or will Jake Paul turn the tables with the finesse of a matador? And I, I want the toughest guy out there. I want the biggest fights and making history is what I've done my whole entire career. And this is no different. Netflix, Mike Tyson, it doesn't get any bigger than this. Today, we've got to talk about something absolutely wild that went down at the latest press conference, Mike Tyson versus Jake Paul. It was good while it lasted. I'm not gonna last much longer. You're fat, Jake. Imagine this Mike Tyson, the legend himself, comes up to the mic. And folks, Iron Mike is in full form, not holding anything back. He looks at Jake Paul, who's all decked out, probably thinking this is just another step on his celebrity boxing ladder. But Tyson, he's not having it. He say, let me just be honest, he's improved a lot. Yes, he did improve a lot, but he's not gonna have a good night when he fights me on July 20th. First off, Tyson calls Jake fat and suicidal for even thinking he can step into the ring with him. Yeah, you heard that right. The baddest man on the planet throwing out zingers like he's roasting marshmallows over a campfire. Make up your mind. Were they hard or am I fat? Well, you're fat, but you had hard muscles, okay? But outside your muscles, you're fat. And let me tell you, the crowd was not expecting that. The air was thick. You could cut the tension with a knife. But wait, it gets better. Jake tries to defend himself, talks about how he's taking on these big challenges. But Tyson, with that stone cold stare, just shuts it down. He says, you're not just taking on a challenge, man. You're walking into a hurricane without a raincoat. And folks, the look on Jake's face? Priceless. Like he just realized he signed up for a marathon but got dropped into a sprint with a cheetah. They say he's the baddest man on the planet, so let's find out. I, apparently he's the final boss moving up the heavyweight and continue to prove all these dumbasses wrong. That's what I do my whole entire life. Now, for all of you watching, I've got to say, this isn't just about the punches that'll be thrown in the ring. It's about witnessing two worlds collide. The old school, hard hitting legend and the new age social media boxing sensation. So what do you all think? Is Jake biting off more than he can chew? Or is he going to surprise us all and hold his own against Tyson? 
I work my ass off, honey. Mike now weighs 230 pounds, and he's got these muscles in his forearms. So, so he's sitting there, and he's a different <laughs> human. He's so intense that I was like, if this table was closer to him, I would be nervous. Like, I wouldn't be able to do my best job as a podcaster. I literally, this the reason why this table is this width. Jake wasn't just fighting the 58-year-old Tyson who'd mellowed with age. He was challenging the lingering ghost of Tyson's former self, the specter of what once had been the most feared man in boxing. But here's the twist. Tyson doesn't just want to win. He wants to make a statement. Every punch he throws isn't just aimed at Jake. It's aimed at every doubter, every headline, and every shadow of his past. And Jake, well, he's about to learn that in the ring. Followers and likes can't shield you from the truth. Post-fight, regardless of the outcome, the reverberations will be felt far and wide. If Tyson wins, it's a reaffirmation of the old guard, a testament to the enduring spirit of a true fighter. If Jake wins, and that's a big, if it's not just an upset, it's a rewriting of the sports and entertainment playbook. But let's not kid ourselves. This fight is Tyson's to lose and Jake's to survive. We're not just watching for the outcome, we're watching for the spectacle, for the chance to say, I was there when Mike Tyson turned a YouTuber into a living, breathing reaction gif. As the fight draws near, the world watches with bated breath. Will it be a display of a young contender's rise or a brutal reminder of why Tyson remains a legend? Rogan, like many, is poised on the edge of his seat, ready to witness what could either be a passing of the torch or a harsh lesson in the cruel realities of combat sports. In the grand narrative of boxing, where legends often face their shadows in the twilight of their careers, this fight stands out as a beacon, a test of time, age, and the indomitable spirit of a warrior. Oops, I mean boxing match of the year. Today we're diving deep into the drama, the banter, and yes, the endless speculation. Is it real, or is it just a master class in acting? Let's find out. Even the Saudi chief got on social media and said, Mike, forget the script, beat this guy. What do you say, tell these people who keep saying that this fight is scripted for Jake Paul to win. Mike says, people keep asking if this fight is scripted. Well, folks, come on down to the front row and you'll see the real deal. Trust me, when I start throwing punches, it's no Hollywood stunt. Well, just come to the front and you'll see. Listen, listen, I started Jake off and I'm going to finish him. Oh, absolutely, Mike. Because if it were scripted, you'd definitely tell us, right? Just like in all great scripted reality shows, the first rule is to admit it's scripted. Spoiler alert. Hey, yeah, come on, fuck Jake Paul. Fuck Jake Paul. Jake Paul. Fuck Jake Paul. Fuck Jake Paul. Hey, I hope y'all keep that same energy when I knock this old man the fuck out. Then Jake the fake is telling us. Well, clearly they don't have a high IQ in here, but that's a federal crime, Brian. For those wondering if this is scripted, come on, use your brains. It's not like we're putting on a Broadway show here. And besides, faking a fight, that's just a federal crime waiting to happen. Right, Jake, because no one ever bends the rules in boxing or entertainment. It's all about intellectual honesty in the ring. And who knew? Jake Paul, the defender of federal law. What a plot twist. He should be lean and mean. He's fat and funky. I saw him with his shirt off the other day. He's fat. I thought, did you start training already? Hey, Buster Douglas was fat, am I right? I know, but you're no Buster Douglas. Mike saying, and this guy, is he even training? He looks more like he's been on a tour of all-you-can-eat buffets rather than in the gym. You're not supposed to eat your way to heavyweight, Jake. Shocking revelation. It turns out, physical appearance and boxing might just matter. Listen, we're here. We did enough talk, I'm ready to fight. Who knew that lean and mean was better than fat and happy Mike? Always the fitness guru, reminding us all how important a salad can be before a fight. Jake added. I'm you're, better, no, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna end you quicker than he did. And, and you'll remember that forever. You okay. started me off, I appreciate that, Mike. I love you, I love you. Like a father loves his son, but I must discipline you. <laughs> you're going down, old man. Okay, I love you too. And Mike, I love you like the father I occasionally listen to, but come July, it's bedtime for you. I'm turning the lights out on your career, Dad. Aww, isn't that sweet? Family bonding over a friendly knockout. Nothing says I love you quite like a promise to put someone to sleep. Remember, kids, it's all in the name of sport. Hey, look, he's right. I, I, I can't stand here and say I did those things, but what I promise to the people is on July 20th, Mike will be put to sleep, and he will feel my power, and I will go down as the man who put Tyson to sleep for the last time. So, as our fighters prepare for this definitely not scripted, totally real confrontation, we'll keep our eyes peeled. Is it a fight? Is it theater? Is it a bit of both? 
One thing's for sure, it's going to be entertaining. But if that Mike Tyson from Marvis Frazier fought Jake Paul, Jake Paul's dead. He's dead. He's not going to make it. So you have to say... And you're apprehensive. And once you're apprehensive, it's over with. Please, Please promise me you're going to kick this guy's ass and shut him up. up. Please. Hey, I'll, I'll do just get that, that for you. you. Even coming off the best, I still think he, he wins. You, you, coming off... It's hard to say because you never bet on, against a 27-year-old no, fighting it. a 58-year-old. McGregor mused, would knocking out a legend really count if the legend isn't in his legendary form? It's like beating Batman, but only because he forgot his utility belt. Sure, the hype machine's in overdrive, with trash talk that could fill novels and entertainment guaranteed. But beneath the spectacle, there's a question hanging in the air. Is this the fight we need, or just the fight we're getting? Netflix is streaming it for free, turning our living rooms into ringside seats. McGregor's not sure if we should be excited or just confused. But hey, in a world where clicks are king, maybe that's the point. Because everybody needs to know how to do that. Well, it starts off like this. You lose everything. Everybody you loved, everybody you thought you loved, and you start all over again. But this time, I'm starting with experience. Before I had no experience, so everything was like, wow, what, I, what can I say? Um, it was really difficult. And um, I had to learn through that experience to start over. But now it's a whole different subject. I'm experienced now. So are we tuning in? McGregor's left us pondering, but something tells me we'll all be watching one way or another. And now, what do you think about, like, now that they have, like, celebrities do guest masks, like Floyd Mayweather and Logan Paul? Logan Paul actually does some wild shit. Yeah, he's, he's really good. good. He does some wild shit. He really does. Jumping off the top ropes and slamming into each other yeah. in the middle, like, that's yeah. some serious yeah. athleticism. Yeah, yeah. I, I tell them, both those kids are half tough. Very tough. Yeah. Yeah. Take yeah. nothing away from them. No, I, I mean, people want to take something away from them because they're YouTube people. I always tell people, watch, just forget that Jake Paul is a YouTube guy and watch him box. Yeah. Kid can fight, 100%. And yeah. that Tommy Fury fight yeah. really showed that. I mean, it goes to a split decision against a legit undefeated boxer. Yeah. He doesn't want to tell you what the one thing he doesn't want to do is fight Mike. No. He wants to fight Mike, I think. Why? I don't know. I don't give a fuck if he's 55. That's still Mike Tyson. Mike, Mike's in good shape, too. Oh, my God. Mike it's... trains every day. Rogan acknowledges the toughness and athletic capabilities of YouTube personalities like Logan Paul, who've transitioned into boxing. He points out that dismissing them due to their internet fame overlooks their genuine skill and dedication to the sport. Success and, and failure, and failure and never quitting. Failure never stops. You never stop failing, you never stop rising. It's just the way life is, up and down, up and down. But do you think, yeah, but 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 at the end, is you're going up. Yeah. You're not really going down. Like, no, it's not a roller coaster. Exactly. You agree? But this is what I've learned, too, from people. The distance from the Rolls Royce and the gutter is just one step. I could always make them a step. That one step could put me back in the gutter. Oh, really? Tell me. Tell me about it. Well, it's Ramadan. You know, we have 30 days fast and praying. Oh, yeah. And no disrespectful stuff come out of your mouth and all that stuff. That's why I can't say what I'm going to do to Jake, really. Oh, yeah. Right now. Okay. okay. But you're going to be successful. Gets the edge. Jake, Jake will beat him, but yeah, Mike could go with you him. You think Jake's gonna beat Mike yeah. Tyson, yeah. Chell? Hey, Jake's the real deal. I mean, you know, Chell, it, 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 Mike Tyson. He's 60 years old. Mike Tyson though. could be 188 yeah. years old. No. Boom, 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 boom. Okay. You move when you move in. Boom. Almost like the overhand. Boom. Your hands out here. Your hands up. Boom, boom, boom. Boom. Cut him right here. Boom, boom, boom. Boom. You think it's cool? That's awesome. In the annals of combat, few names reverberate with the thunder of inevitability like that of Iron Mike Tyson. Behold the resurgence of a legend transforming not just his body, but the very fabric of fear itself. Conqueror, no, I'm Alexander. He's no Alexander. There's no one that can match me. My style is impetuous. My defense is impregnable. And I'm just ferocious. I want your heart. I want to eat his children. Praise be to Allah. At 57, verging on 58, Mike Tyson isn't just defying age. He's rewriting the rules of nature. The beast from Brooklyn back to reclaim the throne with muscles coiled in power that defies the sands of time. 
As the clock ticks closer to fight night, Logan Paul has sounded the alarm. And it's blaring a brutal truth Jake is screwed, not just ordinary screwed, epically, historically, catastrophically screwed. While Jake prances in the limelight, Iron Mike stalks the shadows, each step a quake, each breath a gale. His fists, cataclysms caged in skin. What awaits is not a mere match, but a reckoning. Babe, but what if he knocks you out? Ooh. <laughs> um, <laughs> he sounds nervous. Just look away. <laughs> you told me once at your house, I didn't finish the story. I said, Mike, what made the difference? And you said, a mentor. Absolutely. Without a mentor, if you have a bad mentor, you have, you're going to be a bad student. If you have a good mentor, you have a, you have a good student. That's what I believe. And, and had you not had cuss, had cuss not come along? No, no, it, it's never, it, it can't be like if I didn't have it. It was meant by, God. it's not going to happen. I don't even think like that. No, this is what happened. I don't look at myself as failing. If I wasn't with no. cuss, I'm going to fail. I'm but would there have been somebody else? No, I'm ordained by God to meet the master. Tyson's footwork is a masterclass in itself, always in and out, making it difficult for his opponents to predict his next move. His right hand comes from nowhere, and it's so fast that you can't get out of the way. And if Mike's okay with that, then I'm okay with that. But I want Mike to be the one making this decision because I respect him as the legend. And if he puts me down, I can deal with that. But if I put him down, he needs to be the one making the decision on whether or not he can deal with that. But yes... I'm going in there and now it's a pro fight, it's on my record, and I'm going to fucking put him down. And if people are pissed about it, then watch soccer. It's a sign of victory. I always believe that adversity or nervousness, it like pretty much catapulted me into success. If right. I didn't have these so, feelings, I wouldn't have I wouldn't go into this fight. I feel like I'm losing my mind. <laughs> Everybody in the world go to the gym at one, then I go to the strength and conditioning guy, then it starts all over again. So, Mike, when you, what was the height of your career? Like, when you look at your 50, 58 years, like, if you look back and scan 58, what was the highest point? Losing to Busted Douglas. Busted up. Are yeah. you always busted up? No, probably I hurt my hand from training, but never from the fight. But are you going into a fight with a busted hand? No, I'm going into a fight with a winning spirit. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> hey! I do think parts of you hurt. They want to fuck with me. He's only 200? Oh, gee. This is worse than I thought. Oh, boy. I don't, I don't think there's anything that's going to stop him. What's truly remarkable is Mike being in the zone, getting angry, and letting all his emotions out during training. This is the Tyson we need to see, the one who dominated the boxing world with his peekaboo style, which helped him become the legend he is. At his age, it's clear that he's working well with his coach, and the results are showing. They're proving that efficiency and results go hand in hand, and Tyson is as efficient as ever. I'll give you guys the answer early. Is Jake Paul natural? No. I can say that with pretty certain confidence in that statement. A little bit or something uh -huh. like that. I made it coming without jabbing and moving my head. But dude, you were like undefeated for how long? Well, you could be undefeated, but that don't mean you're the best. Right, right. But you were the best. It appeared to be, yeah. You appeared to be? Yes. But goddamn, he was the best. Look, here's a guy that was the best, and he's saying, no, he, it appeared to be the best. Well, he listen. It's a privilege to witness an icon like Tyson still pushing himself to the limits and inspiring others. Boom at the same time. As he playing the boom, he go down. And it's right here. Boom. <laughs> I was gonna rip his heart out. I'm the best ever. I'm the most brutal and vicious and most ruthless champion there's ever been. There's no one to stop me. Slip. Yep. Yep. And you whip your butt. Pass I think we should do that. Boom. It'd be awesome. Boom. Yeah. I don't see how Jake survives a body attack. Can I make the comparison to Yoda in Star Wars? I'd rather have a few years of glory than a lifetime of um, obscurity. Yeah. I'd rather die 20 than live to be 60 and be nobody. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you know Yoda. Yeah. Like, he'd be hobbling around doing right. whatever, but when Yoda goes Activates. to battle... <laughs> DMT stuff, right. and I just I lost that weight, and I said, I don't know what happened. I just don't know what happened. I just said, I'm going to do this. Well, it's funny because you talked to me on the podcast before. The first time you came on, and you said, I can't even work out. Yes, Because yes. if I work out, my ego will get excited. 
But I did this told, and it's told. I said, "You gotta do it." I said, "You have to do it." The told yeah, told you. you the, have to the DMT do it. told you, you time to fight. You have to do it. Wow. I lost the weight. Want to be up more than anybody in the world want me to be down. So that's why I'm right here talking to him. I think uh, older fighters have more heart and balls and weren't afraid, but I think the newer fighters have more skill and technique and are sharper. So that's why I'd be a better coach. What's your body count, Jake? What's your Yo. body count? Uh, this isn't just a boxing match, it's a saga. Even the Saudi chief got on social media and said, Mike, forget the script, beat this guy. What do you say? Tell these people who keep saying that this fight is scripted for Jake Paul to win. Let's set the stage Mike Tyson, the once undisputed heavyweight champion of the world, a man whose punches were once feared more than the boogeyman in closets is stepping back into the ring. But he's not facing just any contender. Oh no, he's up against Jake Paul, YouTube sensation turned pugilistic pretender. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, this is the clash we didn't know we needed until we really, really didn't need it. Now, before you dismiss this as another cash grab in the twilight years of a boxing legend, let's pause and consider the theatrical masterpiece unfolding before us. The fight announcement between Mike Tyson and Jake Paul has triggered a whirlwind of reactions, notably from Joe Rogan, who weighed in with his signature blend of awe and apprehension on his podcast, The Joe Rogan Experience. Let's dissect his thoughts and add a layer of dramatic flavor to the unfolding saga. But if that Mike Tyson from Marvis Frazier fought Jake Paul, Jake Paul's dead. He's dead. He's not going to make it. So you have to say, how much has Mike Tyson lost from that 20-year-old guy in the... 37 years since then, which is crazy. It'll be 38 wow. by the time they fight. He'll have turned 58 by the time they actually fight. Joe Rogan, the Oracle of Combat Sports Commentary and the Grandmaster of Podcasting, couldn't hold back his thoughts on this match. Picture this Joe in his studio, eyes wide with the kind of fear mixed with excitement that only a fight of this magnitude could elicit. You know, like Mike Tyson's mind has switched over into war. Stay away from his power. I seen him. I seen him working out the other day, and he, you know he throws some good combinations. So those six punch combinations, he has to make sure. I'm talking uh, Jake Paul. Make sure that he's not in the way of those punches because Tyson's a real fighter. Like he was doing this interview, and um, someone said to him, he goes, he goes, you look like you're in your 20s. Like what are you doing? He goes, I just eat raw meat. He's like eating raw meat. He goes, you eating raw meat? He goes, yeah, I'm eating raw meat. He goes because that's what I'm gonna eat when I fight. You don't look like no Tyson at 58 though, right? No, no, Rogan remarked, acknowledging the undeniable force of nature that was a prime Tyson. Rogan, with his deep knowledge and unfiltered approach, reminisced about Tyson's past glories, the thunderous power that had once defined him. He painted a picture of a younger, ferocious Tyson, one that embodied fear and awe in the golden era of heavyweight boxing. At, at any time, did you feel afraid? <laughs> I'm always afraid when I'm around that guy. Kevin Hart said it best. He goes, it's like being in a room with a lion. <laughs> like, even, even if the lion is like, Jamie Foxx's old joke is like someone let a pit bull let loose in the room, they don't know whose it is. Yes. <laughs> Tyson was just terrifying. Rogan reflected his voice, a mix of reverence and a hint of the terror those fighters must have felt facing Tyson in the ring. He's terrifying when he's in the zone. I changed the shape of the table because of him. This table was, uh, we, we had uh, the table that was this size at the old studio, and at the new studio, I was like, maybe we'll make the table smaller, it'll be more intimate, it'll be closer to the guests. In his typical dissecting manner, Rogan corrected the common mix-up between the Paul brothers, but then dove deeper defending Jake Paul's prowess as a legitimate boxer. This wasn't just any YouTuber swinging punches Jake had shown he could scrap with seasoned fighters. If this kid was not a YouTuber, you'd go, this kid can effing fight, Rogan argued, trying to strip away the veneer of internet fame to reveal a fighter worthy of some respect. And the fact that he's willing to fight Tyson, even if Tyson's 57, just the fact that he's willing to actually take a chance at Mike Tyson not being able to do what he used to do. Because mm -hmm. that's what he's doing. The, ch the gamble is, like, there's not a fucking chance in hell that Jake Paul would survive against the Mike Tyson that beat Marvis Frazier. You yeah. ever watch that fight? Yeah. That's my favorite Mike Tyson fight. But the shadow of Tyson's legacy looms large. Rogan couldn't help but bring up Tyson's most chilling performance against Marvis Frazier, describing it as an execution. This was Tyson in his prime, unstoppable, unbeatable, a force of raw, brutal talent. That Mike Tyson, the Mike Tyson that won the title against Trevor Burbick, the Mike Tyson that beat Larry Holmes. I think that Mike Tyson is the best heavyweight of all time, Rogan declared, setting a high bar against which he implicitly measured Jake Paul's chances. Tyson has thrown a bombshell, accusing his upcoming adversary, Jake Paul, of steroid use. This startling claim has cast a shadow over their scheduled clash, turning what was a highly anticipated match into a spectacle shrouded in controversy. As the fight date draws near, Tyson, a figure synonymous with both raw power and tumultuous past, 
has not shied away from voicing his suspicions about Paul's sudden physical transformations. Observing Paul's aggressive training regimen, Tyson remarked on the unnatural progression in his physique and demeanor, suggesting performance-enhancing drugs could be at play. Those little bumps on your face kind of alarm me, Tyson pointed out in a recent press conference. You wouldn't be happening to take PEDs, are you? Jake Paul, ever the provocateur, has responded with a mix of denial and defiance, suggesting Tyson is building an excuse for what's to come. However, the test results spoke louder than words. When the steroids test came back positive, it vindicated Tyson's accusations, leaving the sports world in turmoil. This revelation has not only put Paul's integrity under scrutiny, but has also jeopardized the upcoming fight, with potential cancellations and fines looming over Paul's head. Amidst this brewing storm, Lennox Lewis, the last undisputed heavyweight champion and a stalwart of the sport, offered his insights. Known for his analytical approach and no-nonsense attitude, Lewis expressed both fascination and concern. I think uh, it's going to be a good fight. I mean, you know, Mike Tyson, what he does is two-dimensional. He's going to come at you, trying to knock you out. Now, you got to try and stay away from him. Mike's training at 58 is something phenomenal, Lewis observed. He's not just a fighter, he's a force. Yet, he cautioned Paul highlighting the risks of underestimating Tyson's ability to unleash devastation even at his age. We saw him working out the other day. He's 57 years young. He's still got it. He's still got it in his eyes. He's still got it in the body. Oh, yeah. No, Tyson can throw a punch. He can take a punch. So, you know, he's doing something that he's used to. As the July 20th showdown approaches, expectations are at a fever pitch. Tyson, fueled by wrath and a sense of betrayal, seems more determined than ever to prove a point not just to win, but to expose. On the other hand, Paul, despite the allegations, remains a wild card with much to prove. The fight is expected to be not just a physical contest, but a battle of wits and strategy, with each fighter looking to exploit the other's weaknesses. The age of innocence in boxing is long over, one might say sarcastically. Now we have drama, steroids, and YouTube stars turning the sport into a reality show. What's next? Are we going to see a Kardashian referee the match? Thea's situation indeed reads like a script from a Hollywood blockbuster with heroes and villains, plot twists, and a climax that remains uncertain until the last bell rings. The public and media reaction has been a whirlwind of speculation, analysis, and entertainment. Boxing forums, social media platforms, and sports news outlets are abuzz with debates and discussions about the integrity of the sport, the role of fame in modern athletics, and the true meaning of competition. As we edge closer to D-Day, the Tyson vs. Paul event transcends the confines of a typical boxing match. It has morphed into a cultural phenomenon that reflects the complexities and the changing dynamics of sports entertainment. It raises questions about legacy, legitimacy, and the fine line between spectacle and sport. Regardless of the outcome, July 20th will undoubtedly be remembered as a day when boxing danced dangerously with drama, and the world watched, captivated. Stay away from his power. I seen him, I seen him working out the other day, and he, you know, he throws some good combinations. So those six punch combinations, he has to make sure, I'm talking uh, Jake Paul, make sure that he's not in the way of those punches because Tyson's a real fighter. Those six punch combinations, they're a message. Jake Paul needs to heed that message he'll be overwhelmed. Tyson isn't just fighting, he's reclaiming his time, his throne. Lewis continues, seeing Mike like this, it's like watching a force of nature. He's two-dimensional in his focus, but multi-dimensional in his execution. He's a vortex, one that Jake must navigate with caution. The power, the intensity, it's all there. You saw him working out the other day, he's 57 years young, he's still got it, he's still got it in his eyes, he's still got it in the body. Oh yeah, no, Tyson can throw a punch, he can take a punch, so, you know, he's doing something that he's used to. Within the electrifying build-up to the fight, Lennox Lewis has repeatedly offered stern warnings to Jake Paul, emphasizing the critical need for caution and strategy. Jake needs to really understand what he's stepping into, Lewis pointed out in a recent interview, his tone a mixture of concern and earnestness. Mike Tyson isn't just another opponent. He's a whirlwind of power and precision. He's going to come at you trying to knock you out. That's his domain, his ring. I've seen him. Those six-punch combinations are not just impressive, they're destructive. 
Jake has to ensure he's not in the path of those punches, or he's in for a world of trouble. Lewis's advice is not just a caution, but a strategic blueprint for survival. Staying away from Mike's power, that's easier said than done, Lewis continued, highlighting the daunting challenge Paul faces. I've observed Mike's sessions, and the intensity and ferocity he brings, even now, is something Jake must prepare for like never before. Stars turning the sport into a reality show. What's next? Are we going to see a Kardashian referee the match? Thea's situation indeed reads like a script from a Hollywood blockbuster, with heroes and villains, plot twists, and a climax that remains uncertain until the last bell rings. The public and media reaction has been a whirlwind of speculation, analysis, and entertainment. Boxing forums, social media platforms, and sports news outlets are abuzz with debates and discussions about the integrity of the sport, the role of fame in modern athletics, and the true meaning of competition. As we edge closer to D-Day, the Tyson vs. Paul event transcends the confines of a typical boxing match. It has morphed into a cultural phenomenon that reflects the complexities and the changing dynamics of sports entertainment. It raises questions about legacy, legitimacy, and the fine line between spectacle and sport. Regardless of the outcome, July 20th will undoubtedly be remembered as a day when boxing danced dangerously with drama, and the world watched, captivated. Stay tuned, and remember, in the ring of life, it's not about how hard you hit, but how much drama you can stir before you step in. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell for more thrilling updates as we count down to Tyson vs. Paul, a fight that promises to be as much about the controversies outside the ring as the punches thrown within it. Tyson's coach whispers strategy, but his eyes speak of wars from decades past that taught him the price and prize of being undisputed. As fight night approaches, Tyson's training intensifies. The sound of gloves against pads, a rhythmic beat that underscores a warrior's preparation. It's not just about physical readiness, it's about mental fortitude. Tyson's regimen is crafted to ensure that his mind is as sharp as his punches. Meditation, visualization, and psychological warfare are all parts of his arsenal now. The world watches, some with bated breath, others with skeptical murmurs. Can Tyson truly return to form? Does Jake Paul stand a chance against a seasoned veteran whose very name evokes images of knockouts and victories? The fight is more than a match. It's a cultural phenomenon. It bridges generations, contrasting the raw power of the old guard with the brash confidence of the new. I seen him, I seen him working out the other day, and he, you know, he throws some good combinations. So those six punch combinations, he has to make sure, I'm talking uh, Jake Paul, make sure that he's not in the way of those punches because Tyson's a real fighter. Those six punch combinations, they're a message. Jake Paul needs to heed that message or he'll be overwhelmed. Tyson isn't just fighting, he's reclaiming his time, his throne. Lewis continues, seeing Mike like this, it's like watching a force of nature. He's two-dimensional in his focus, but multi-dimensional in his execution. He's a vortex, one that Jake must navigate with caution. The power, the intensity, it's all there. You saw him working out the other day, he's 57 years young, he's still got it, he's still got it in his eyes, he's still got it in the body. Oh yeah, no, Tyson can throw a punch, he can take a punch, so, you know, he's doing something that he's used to. Within the electrifying build-up to the fight, Lennox Lewis has repeatedly offered stern warnings to Jake Paul, emphasizing the critical need for caution and strategy. Jake needs to really understand what he's stepping into, Lewis pointed out in a recent interview, his tone a mixture of concern and earnestness. Mike Tyson isn't just another opponent. He's a whirlwind of power and precision. He's going to come at you trying to knock you out. That's his domain, his ring. I've seen him. Those six punch combinations are not just impressive, they're destructive. Jake has to ensure he's not in the path of those punches or he's in for a world of trouble. Lewis's advice is not just a caution, but a strategic blueprint for survival. Staying away from Mike's power, that's easier said than done, Lewis continued, highlighting the daunting challenge Paul faces. I've observed Mike's sessions, and the intensity and ferocity he brings, even now, is something Jake must prepare for like never before. Join us, witness history, and remember, when titans clash, the world stands still. Stay tuned as we bring you closer to the action, 
with exclusive insights and behind-the-scenes peeks into one of the most anticipated fights in recent history. Subscribe, like, and share as we count down to a night that will redefine what it means to be a champion. This is not just a fight, it's a testament to the enduring allure of boxing. Jake Paul, our plucky, pampered internet darling, faces not just a man, but a myth, a living engine of destruction. It's kind of insulting. It's brave, it's bold in him, but it's also, it's like, Jesus Christ, there's levels to this world. Mike Tyson, the baddest man on the planet, is morphing into something even the gods of war would fear. Impetuous style? Check. Impregnable defense? Check. A hunger so ferocious he once vowed to consume his adversary's progeny? Oh, you better believe that's a check. As fight night looms, one question remains, will Jake even show? Or will the sheer aura of Tyson's comeback terror prompt a last minute forfeit? Iron Mike, the apex predator of the ring, is on the prowl. Witness the spectacle, the horror, the glory. It's not just a fight, it's the resurrection of a legend. Mike Tyson versus Jake Paul, the countdown to doomsday begins. Mike Tyson vs Jake Paul, be there, if you dare. This isn't just a boxing match, it's a cultural moment, a meme in the making. A story will tell for years to come about the day a legend stepped back into the ring, not just to fight a man, but to battle an era. What do we make of this? Was Jake's withdrawal a calculated move to preserve his health and brand? Or did the imminent reality of facing a legend like Tyson, in what many saw as a mismatch, finally hit home? The line between bravery and folly is thin in boxing, and perhaps this time may caution one out over valor. In the aftermath, the controversy surrounding the canceled fight has rivaled the initial hype. Jake Paul, already a divisive character, finds himself mired in even more contention as he faces significant damage to his credibility. Meanwhile, Mike Tyson, an enduring symbol of the sport, continues on, his storied legacy barely grazed by what will likely be remembered as a minor blip in his illustrious career. This episode has only further cemented Tyson's status as a legend, while for Jake, it poses tough questions about his future in boxing. So where do you stand? Was canceling the fight a show of prudence or a capitulation of fear? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more deep dives into the world of sports and beyond. Until next time, keep questioning the narratives fed to us. And always look beyond the hype.